Hi, and welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. My name is Kristen Jones, and thank you so much for joining me this week. This week's uh, episode is a part two of a three-part series, kind of getting back to the basics of what, one, what I what I teach, what we uh, believe in, kind of what we follow in the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community, and really honestly, what I think is the answer to uh, addressing emotional eating and losing weight at the same time. Now, one of the I'm actually in the in the process right now of writing a script for a video that I'm going to be doing that is really going to be um, that I'll be posting on Facebook and posting in my in my various uh, platforms. It's really going to be kind of a video that explains kind of what what makes what I do, and there's just a handful of us that do this, what makes what I do very different than any other, you know, any other diet program out there. As anybody knows, if you are, you might not know if you are, if you're not a member of the group, hello, where are you? You need to come. Breakthrough Emotional Eating on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough and join, join the group and just created a new uh, new member welcome guide. Um, I'm so excited about it because it's really pretty and I designed it myself, which is, I'm usually not a designer person. I usually do not do any of my own designs. I usually hire them out, but I was in a pinch and I did it anyway. And I'm so darn proud of myself. I'm probably breaking my arm, patting myself on the back. But when you're not the creative type and then you can do something that even is remotely creative, it's so exciting. Um, just kind of opens up a whole new world of things for me to do. But um, it, it's it's the guide really starts off with explaining like what do we believe here? And we believe we don't believe in diets. I don't believe in diets. I think diets are something. I, and I certainly don't think. I think what what the diet industry tells people and tells people about how to lose weight and the reason why you're, you know, why you're losing weight or why you gain it back or why you gained it in the first place. Um, I don't, I, it's not that I don't think it's not truthful. I just don't think that it serves people. And so I don't, because I just think it keeps people in this very vicious loop and very vicious circle. So, uh, I was pre I'm prepping that that um, that video, and so I was, you know, just thinking about all of the things that that I would want people to know about the brain and about how we think, and that again, you know, my motto here and our motto, thanks to uh, to Joyce Clark, is is it's not about the food, and it never is. It's not your gaining weight, losing weight. It, the food's a vehicle, but the food's not what the problem is. And we need to figure out, we need to get to that. We need to get to what that is and even figure out even remotely, how do we figure that out? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about the brain because, you know, as human beings, we don't do anything without our brain involved. So why would we ever think that we shouldn't look at our brain when it comes to doing something so universally um, uh, common as losing as trying to lose weight. You know, I was online, I was, I was on the Google today and uh, I was looking at um, some statistics. It, one website uh, uh, quoted 54% of the population of America, 54% of the population of America right now, on average, on average right now in this moment, is, is striving to lose weight, is trying to lose weight, 54% trying to lose weight. And they're the ones who actually owned up to saying they were trying to lose weight. Um, the percentage of women, even higher. And so, you know, it's obviously something that is, that is on people's minds. It's obviously something that's a concern. It's obviously something that is an, an epidemic in and of itself. And so, what's the real legit way that we need to be dealing with this? And so that's why I really wanted to go back to the basics of this, of, of the program that I offer and, and what the basics are. And so last week, again, talked about, talked about emotions, talked about where emotions, where our thoughts, uh, where our, our emotions come from. Our emotions come from our thoughts. They don't come from what other people do. Um, why do our why do our emotions scare us? Why are we wanting to distract from them? Why do we not want to deal with them? 
Well, oftentimes it's because people feel like if they start feeling their emotions, they're going to never be able to stop feeling their emotions. And actually the opposite is exactly true. When we ignore them, they just get bigger and stronger and then they take over our lives and then we don't have any control over them. What we're trying to do is we're trying to manage and control our thoughts that lead to our feelings and then the actions that we take. So that is what we're going to talk about today. So how the brain works. So the first thing we need to know is I just want to review what I call the T cycle. And the T cycle is the T stands for thoughts. Thoughts create the E, which is emotions. And then emotions drive the A, which is actions. So it's always about thoughts, emotions, and actions. So thoughts lead to emotions, lead to actions. Not I got into a fender bender and that's why I'm so upset. It's I got into a fender bender and it's what I said to myself and made myself think about that fender bender that made me feel terrible that then caused me to do whatever, you know, yell and scream and, and you know, cuss somebody out or whatever it is. We always have to remember we get a choice in everything that we want, in any way that we want to interpret something, any way we want to think about something. So we always have that choice. We always have that. Do we get to make that decision ourselves? So when we talk about our brain, well, where do our thoughts come from? Our thoughts come from our brain. So we have to understand and know how, what what is what are the processes that our brain goes through. What is our what is our brain doing, and why the heck does it seem like it's not it's not on our side? So um, for for this purpose, we're going to talk about two areas of the brain. And the two areas that we're going to talk about, uh, the first one is the primal brain. The second one is the prefrontal cortex. The primal brain is our brain that we have when we're a small child. It's the one we're born with. It's the one that we take all the way until we die. Um, but that part of our brain is all about survival. And it's all about, um, you know, the fight or flight. It's keeping us alive. It's wanting us to be happy. It is making sure that that we you know we get that instant gratification and what we want in the moment is what the primal brain wants. And you can kind of think like, oh gosh, we should really get rid of that primal brain. Well, we don't want to get rid of it because it keeps us alive. It's actually really, really important. But that primal brain pretty much dominates most people's way of thinking. The other part of our brain that we want to actually develop a little bit more is our prefrontal cortex. And our prefrontal cortex is the one that does all of our long-term planning. It does all of the thoughts for future work, for where we want to be, where we want to go to. And it's all about planning and it's the it multitasks and all of those things. So when we think about those two parts of our brains, we have to, we can't, one's not good and one's not bad. They're both necessary. But probably as you're sitting there and as I'm sitting here, most of the time, our primal brain is making the decisions for us about 90% of the time. And the prefrontal cortex is making decisions about 10% of the time. Probably would be a better idea for us to get those more to be even. So we're going about 50-50 with our primal brain and our, and our prefrontal cortex. We don't want to get rid of either one, but we do want them a little more balanced because we can't, I mean, we can, we can always be looking for instant gratification, but that might not be in our best interest when it comes to what we have, when, when it comes to goals and for our purposes, when it comes to goals in regards to weight loss. And so it's important to know that again, Neither one of those is either is any more important than the other. They're different and they, we just need to work on balancing them out and making sure that they are kind of both working equally and we'd like it to get to that point. That's really the, 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 the thing that we're always striving for. Um, so four, uh, yeah, no, sorry. I don't know. I have four. Do I have four? No, I think I have three. Three important things that you need to know about the brain is the first one is the brain is very resistant to change. It wants you staying exactly the same. And knowing that, that's one of the reasons when people go on a diet and it's that, you know, that last weekend before the diet, because it starts on Monday, 
And I mean, there are even books about, you know, starting on Monday, anytime we make a dramatic change from the status quo, which is even if it's not healthy, the status quo to a change and the change is healthy, your brain is still like, what is going on? Like it's, it senses change as being dangerous, as being something that is putting you as a human being at risk. And it will do whatever it takes to keep you safe. So in its mind, when you start making dramatic changes to your diet, it is going to push back on that so much because it, it's afraid you're going to die. So it will make everything seem so appealing. You will see so many more commercials for food. You will be encouraged by your brain to get up and go eat something because it doesn't, it wants you to stay exactly where you are. Now, can you override that? 150%. But it's important to know that that's going to happen. That's going to happen just because of the nature of where, the way your brain is. And again, because it is trying to keep you healthy and safe. Second thing, your brain is responsible for giving you your first thought. You get to decide, do you want to believe that thought? Do you want to go with it? Or do you want to say, mm -mm, I am not going to believe that's not true. And you rebut that thought because all thoughts are optional. Any thought that your brain gives you, it is absolutely optional. So an example of this is it for me personally, this is what happens almost, <laughs> almost every time when I run. Um, if I'm running and I was out running this morning, I was running with a couple of clients and we ran up this hill that was long. It, it's probably, oh my gosh, it's long, it's long, it's really not that long, but it is long when you're running up it. It's it's probably, I would say it is most likely an eight to nine degree uh incline. And it we probably were running uphill straight uphill, not not stopping. I would say it was probably a good 10 to 12 minutes of straight uphill running. And my brain kept telling me, you gotta stop. You got you gotta walk. You got you. Why are you doing this? You got to walk. And I kept thinking to myself, and, and the thought would come into my head: can get to that thing, and then you you know get to the next telephone pole, and then you can walk. And then I would say, but I feel fine. Like I don't need to walk. And then it'd come back and it'd say, no, you really do. Like why don't you got you got to go? You got to you, you should probably walk. And then I'd say, but but my like my 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 lungs aren't hurting. My and I so I was kind of having this conversation. The whole time I'm running up this hill, my brain kept giving me these thoughts of like, you've got to stop. You can't do this. This is too long. Why on earth would you want to run all the way up this hill? And I just had to, no, it's okay. I don't feel bad. I can, I can run. I can keep running. It was slow. I'm telling you, my feet were barely lifting off the ground, but I didn't care. But the fact, the point is that, that I had a choice. My brain kept telling me, you need to stop. You need to stop. You don't need to run up this hill. And I was like, why not? Like I can, I can do hard things. Why not? Let me see what I can do. And I did. And both my clients did as well. And so it's, it's important to know that you always get to decide you get to override or dismiss a thought that comes into your head. You do not have to believe it and you do not have to buy into it. And so it's really important. That is a, a huge, and that's huge, especially when it comes to your relationship with food. Your brain tells you that you need to eat something. Do you really need to? That's when you get to have that conversation of, do I really need to? Or am I just, is it just like, that's what feels good in this moment. And, and I just, I, I kind of want that relief. I don't really want to work that hard. Well, no, no, that's, we can, we can come back and say, mm -mm, no, we're okay. I don't need to, I don't need to eat anything. I'm good. I can, I cannot do that. I uh, would love to hear from anyone who's watching in the group live. How many of you have, and especially if you're one of my clients, how many of you have had that opportunity where you get that thought, that first thought, and it comes in and it wants you to do something that is so not in your best interest. And you were able to say no, and then kind of convince your brain like, no, we don't need to do that. That's not true. Love to hear just write, uh, just write brain override brain override in the comments. If you've ever been able to like catch that thought, that's not going to serve you. And instead of going with it, you came back with a different, a different 
thought a different, you know, you told your brain, nope, we're not doing that. So brain override. I would love to hear from anybody who who had that who's had that experience. Cause I know many of my my clients are are getting really good at talking back to their brain and being like, Mm-mm, nope, nope, we're not doing that. Awesome. Love it. Billy, Lori, Holly. Excellent. Yep. Just who I'm, just who I was thinking. Good, Deborah. That's awesome. And, and it's and it's anybody can do it. Anyone can learn how to do it. It definitely is an, an acquired, um, an acquired, uh, an acquired taste. Oh, Jennifer's doing it right now. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. I love it. That's awesome. And Jennifer, just, 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 you just got to keep, you, yep. So just, and just sit on the couch, but I'm getting my gym clothes on and heading out. That's amazing. So good. Yeah. We just have to tell our brains like, no, that's not, what, that's not what we're doing now. This is better. This is what's better for me. So every one of us, every single one of us has the power to do that. You all can do that. And it's just catching yourself in that moment and being like, nope, this is what we're, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to be in control. The last thing that's really important that you, that you remember, and this is where being aware of your thoughts and the negative patterns that our thoughts usually take. Now, if you feel like, my gosh, my thoughts are so negative, have, I'm like all the time and I'm negative like towards myself. I'm not just negative about other people. Like in fact, I'm not even negative. I'm only negative about myself. And I only say mean things to myself. Remember that your brain, again, is responsible for your survival. So your brain will always present the worst case scenario. It will always show the worst thing first because it thinks if you know and you're prepared for it, then you can somehow, like somehow that's going to be to your advantage. Well, it's not. It's not because it just makes you feel terrible. So it's important to recognize again that when those thoughts come in, you get to decide if they're going to be thoughts that you that you welcome in or do you push them away. You have to decide what, and, and again, a thought before we get to the feeling stage is very, very different. Having a feeling and then looking for the thought and then deciding I want to change it, that's a little bit different. I don't want people to think that I am in any way encouraging people. Just think positive thoughts. That is not what this is about. This is about feeling your emotions, and but also we don't need to try and and make up thoughts that are going to make us feel bad because honestly our brain is going to give us so many negative thoughts that we've got to start we got to start shielding those things we don't need to invite even more of that so whatever you can do to try and control the thoughts that you're creating or that or that you're that you're focusing on and then kind of allow allow your brain to do what it's doing but we don't need to be going we don't need to be looking for for bad thoughts and then bad feelings that are com- coming from it it's really really important that you know your brain will show you and will give you any thought that you repeat a lot so if you repeat a thought i i did a post in the group um la- uh, on monday and I asked, what were some thoughts that people had about themselves and about their ability to lose weight? And I think almost all of them were incredibly negative. And I, and I, and that was really what I was, because I knew, I knew that was what, I know that's what happens. But what we have to be aware of is when we say those thoughts and we allow those thoughts to be in our heads, our brain is like, oh, she keeps thinking like the thought, I just can't lose weight or the thought, why try to eat healthy when I know I'm going to screw this up? If those are the thoughts that continually repeat, your brain only pays attention to, she keeps thinking the same thing. She must like thinking that. So we're going to keep having that thought repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And I know many of you will say, you know, I really, like, I really don't want to think this, but if you're still thinking it either subconsciously, or you're not aware of what your thoughts are and you're thinking, gosh, I really don't want this thought to come. And it just keeps coming. It's because you're not defending and pushing that thought away and saying, no, we don't think that way anymore. You have to have a conversation with your brain. You need to tell your brain, if there's a thought that comes in that is unkind and negative, you get to say, no, no, we don't do that anymore. 
And then your brain will be like, really? Let me show it to you again. And then you say it again. And you just keep pushing it away and keep and keep de kind of defending your space with that brain because we have to train our brain to recognize that's not the thought we want to have anymore. Because for the last 30, 40, 50 years, you've probably been having those same kinds of thoughts. So your brain, of course, is going to think that that's something you want to think about. You have to train your brain. You are responsible for training, retraining your brain to be more positive and to think different types of thoughts because our brain is only doing what we have trained it to do and what it was from an evolutionary standpoint, what it was built to do, again, to keep us alive and to protect us. So it's not like it's doing anything wrong. It's just we have a different agenda now. Now do we just don't want to survive? Because remember, that's what the brain, the brain is just trying to keep us alive and, and, and survive. We don't want to survive. We want to thrive. And that's very different. And so that takes us upping our level of ability to be able to, to make these changes and to be able to kind of reprogram our brain to be more positive and not immediately go to those negative thoughts. So how does all of this information how does this information relate to weight loss? Well, it relates in a couple of different ways. And, and probably the most, I'm going to say the most obvious is that when your brain goes to those thoughts of, well, you know, you're trying, you really can't do it anyway, or why don't you just have that extra piece of, you know, you can have another piece of pizza. One piece of pizza is not enough. You need you need to have only one. You need. You don't need to only have one. You need at least three. I mean, come on. That's what we always eat. That's what you need to do. So when your brain starts having, when you start having those types of conversations, you have to to realize that when if you don't if you if you don't push that thought and say nope, that's not what we're going to do, and you give into that thought, you give into that thought, and you eat. There's a very, very, very small temporary time where you're like, ah, oh, this is great. And then the guilt comes in and then you feel bad. So you've had the thought, brain gave you the thought, you need more pizza. The feeling was, oh, this feels good. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. We eat the pizza and then the result is we feel terrible. So then there's another thought that comes right after we feel terrible. That thought is, oh, you did it again. Here we go. That makes you feel terrible. When you feel terrible, your brain only wants you to feel better. So what's it going to do? It's going to tell you to do all the things that are going to make you feel good. And the number one thing that's going to make you feel good is to eat something because it's going to distract you from this horrible feeling that you have. And so this just becomes this circle that you just keep going through over and over and over. And your brain is like, yay, she's not going to change at all. We're just going to keep doing playing this little game. That is not, that is not what you want. That's absolutely not what you want. The next, the other thing that uh, the other way that this relates to to weight loss as well is that when your when you say something negative. So if you say something negative, like like I just I just can't like I the one I always love is um, I I just I'm just a nighttime eater. I can't not eat at night. I have to eat at night. I have to eat after dinner, and it's such a problem for me. When that's what you're telling your brain, that's what you're saying. Your brain, again, wanting to make you happy, will be like, okay, let's look for all the evidence to prove her that she's right, that she can't, she has to eat at night. And so your brain will just give you all the reasons as to why you do, you do need to eat at night and you should eat at night. And that's kind of what you're destined to do. And so it will search high and low for all sorts of evidence that, yeah, you are a nighttime eater. Yeah, you are. And it wants, it wants you to see that. And it wants you to feel really good because it wants to prove you right. But that's not what you want. You don't want your brain to prove you right that you're a nighttime eater. Where did that come from? It came from your thoughts because you were kept thinking, I'm just this, I'm so bad at nighttime eating. This is just terrible. Now, I'm going to ask this question and ask you to be honest in the comments, how many of you repeat phrases and thoughts about yourself that are demeaning and hurtful and that you keep repeating them over and over and over and they make you feel bad and you just 
keep that cycle going. How many of you are saying things and you're not catching it and it's, it's happening over in your, and you're continually feeling bad, you grab something to eat, feel bad, grab something to eat again, feel bad, try to say, I'm not going to eat anything and then jump right in and eat something else. If that is a problem, all I want you to do is write repeat. <laughs> Just write the word repeat in the comments. And that'll let me know that, that I mean, because I think, and, and I, I would say that's true. For, that's true for everyone at some, at one point or another, we get those thoughts that come in that tell us this is what we need to be doing. And, and you're like, oh my God, I can't, I, I don't need, this is not what I need to be doing, but I can't get that thought to stop. You have to stay, you have to be able to recognize when the thought happens and then, and then have something to say back to your brain, like, nope, we are not doing that. That's not how we roll here. And that is where that's really the, it's that self-talk that I think is the thing that is, if, if people can get their self-talk dialed in and be able to catch when their brain continues to do the negative self-talk and you can just, you know, di not, not divert your brain, but kind of rebut have a rebuttal to your brain of like, nope, that's not what we do anymore. And just continue to do that and be committed time patience and commitment and consistency is what we need in order to change things. We're talking about things that have been, you know, systems and, and thoughts and patterns that your brain has been doing for decades. It is not going to take three months to make that go away. It's not, it's not. And, and if you're doing it once a week, like you're like, oh, I think I need to do some affirmations today. I should do affirmations. I'm feeling really bad. Yeah, no, you got to do affirmations. You got to, you got to build yourself up even when you're, even on days when you're feeling good, you got, you continue to do that. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about what you, what, what the things are that you can do. So we really have to understand we have so much power. We out, we have the ultimate power over our brain, but nobody, there are very few of us who are talking about how do we harness the power of our brain to change how we think about food and how we think about our consumption of food and our desire and our need for food. And that is what I teach. That's what I, that's, that's what, that's what this is all about is, is understanding. And part of it is understanding and educating people about this, about how your brain actually works and the things that you can do. It's not about taking a pill. It's not about eating prepackaged foods. I'm going to tell you all, it is not about eating prepackaged food. It is not about following someone else's meal plan. It is not about someone else telling you what to eat and telling you how much and measuring it out for you and all the things and frozen food and all of that. That is not what it's about. It's about you taking control of your thoughts, then your feelings and your actions and what you do with them. And that is where, that's where the magic happens. So is it a quick process? No. Am I still working on it? Absolutely. 100%. Every day, every day. But Every day I get closer, every day I get closer. And I'm not even getting closer to anything because there's no end. It's just just get, becoming more and more comfortable with my connection and my relationship with food and my relationship with myself. And that's what this is about. All right, so what can you do to start to manage your brain? Because your brain is a little out of control right now. So what can you do to start managing your brain and really kind of hone in on the thoughts that it, that it is producing because it's going to produce its own thoughts, but then you get to decide, okay, do I go along with that or not? So the first thing is, again, something I said earlier, you have to know all thoughts are optional. All thoughts are optional. Okay. All. You don't have to go along with them. You can push back on them. You can believe them. You cannot. It's to, the, Every thought is optional. You do not have to buy into it. So if you're you know, your brain tells you that you need to, you know, buy something that is, you know, you need to go, you need to get into the fast food line. You need to go to McDonald's. I don't have to, I don't have to buy into that. I don't have to go along with that. You get to decide. Second thing, what you think about, you attract. What you think about, you attract. So the more you think about certain things, the more your brain says, oh, well, we're going to find, we're just going to bring more thoughts like that. We're going to, we're going to try and pull some other thoughts. We're going to try and pull some other proof to show her just how good she is at that thought that she really <laughs> doesn't really want to be having. But 
it's important to know that you, your, the thoughts you have, you will attract more of them the more you keep thinking them. So be very aware of the thoughts that you have. Very aware. It does not mean that we that we change our thoughts to change our feelings. We if we have if we're not feeling if we have a, a, a feeling that makes us uncomfortable or there's something that we're feeling, we need to be able to feel them. And I talked about that last week, but. We don't need to be going and looking for that. We don't need to be creating drama. I think you all know life will find us drama, things in life, negative things are going to find us because remember life is 50, 50, 50% positive emotion, 50% negative emotion. It will find us either way. We do not need to go looking for it. I know you all know people who have reasonably, you know, like they have great lives all these things going on and they just stir up the drama. They are all about what can I say to get other people riled up or what can I say? My life is boring. I think I need some drama. Let me make something up. We all know people like that. We all know people who enjoy that. You don't want to be one of those people. You don't want to be one of those people with your brain and doing that for yourself because that drama is only going to lead you to no, to doing things that are not going to be in your best interest. And in our case, thinking about the foods that you eat. Um, you need to make decisions ahead of time. What does that mean? Well, it means if you have, if you have, if you've, if you've gotten my, my, um, my new welcome guide, if you have, um, done, you know, looked at anything that I have, I've, if I've given out, I, I have a planner that I ask people to write down their meals ahead of time, not track food. Tracking food is very, very different. Tracking food is after the fact you eat something and then you track it, you write it down, you give your calorie counts and blah, 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 blah. Don't care. Don't care about calories. Um, this is planning your meals ahead of time and committing and that's all you're going to eat. That's what you're going to, whatever you write down is what you're going to eat. And what you're doing is you're training your brain to trust you. Because right now, as you're listening to this, or you're watching this video, your brain doesn't really trust you because you've probably in the last five hours have said you were going to do something and you really didn't follow through on it. Or, you know, I'm going to drink more water today and you still haven't done it. Or I'm going to, um, you know, it, it was, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat clean today. It's such a random, it's such a, it's such an arbitrary thought. I'm going to eat clean today. What does that mean? But you, you, you're not doing it. So your brain has lost trust in you. You need to get that trust back with your brain because that means when you actually write down or say you're going to do something and then you follow through and do it doesn't have to have anything to do with food, but it could just be like, I'm going to walk my dog. That's always mine. I'm going to walk my dog today. I need to actually follow through and do it because then my brain will be like, oh, she does what she says. She's, she, we can trust her. She says, but she does what she says she's going to do. And that allows my brain, that allows my primal brain to become less dominant and my prefrontal cortex, the one that does all the long-term planning, it becomes more prominent. So decisions ahead of time are really, really important. And lastly, we absolutely have to supplement and build on positive self-talk because the negative self-talk is just who we are as human beings. It's just part of our DNA. We've got to start supplementing and putting in more positive thoughts about ourselves. And so that means catching yourself when you start to go down that negative thought pattern, doing affirmations every day, doing affirmations more than once a day. You know, I, I recommend that people write affirmations in the morning and at night, and then you say them, you know, either to yourself or you read them three more times during the day. And that you really only pick affirmations that are really powerful that are really ones that you that that really resonate with you. You don't have a bunch of random ones, but you really pick the ones that you feel are most impactful and those become your focus. Those become what you want to change. Those are the things that you want to have that you want different. And that and so again, focusing on the self-talk, focusing on what kind of thoughts are your is your brain creating, interrupting and stopping those thoughts and saying, "No, we don't think that way anymore. Instead, I think this way." And we give our brain something more positive to think about. That is going to do a lot more 
and it's going to actually allow you to kind of move in that direction. So again, our brain is incredibly powerful and you are incredibly powerful when it comes to managing your thoughts and managing how you're feeling, managing what, what again, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. And all of those things all kind of come together and they allow us working together to either progress or they allow us to fall behind. You get to decide, do you want to progress? Do you want to move forward? Do you want to start doing these things so you can put yourself in the best possible position to lose weight? Absolutely you do. That is that that is 100%. And so again, the beginning steps are just understanding the basics of understanding how does my brain work and why do I need to be paying attention to it? Why do I need to be here listening to those thoughts? Why do I need to be listening to them and then deciding, do I want to go along or do I want to say no? And that you get to override any thought that doesn't work for you and doesn't move you in a positive direction. I absolutely hope that this helps. Uh, next week, week uh, episode number three of our three-part series, I'm going to tell you how to put all of this stuff together, how it all is going to work together to give you your first steps as you move forward in looking at your emotional eating, understanding that, and this is something I really feel like I have to say, really have to say this, and I'm actually, this is going to be part of what the video that I'm going to be making. Losing weight will not solve your emotional eating, okay? Losing weight will not solve, cure, eliminate, end your emotional eating. It absolutely won't. And I say that because that's all I ever did. That's what I kept thinking. If I could just get to this certain weight, if I could just weigh a certain amount, then all of this obsession, all of these thoughts, all of these horrible thoughts I had about myself, they'd all go away. And then I'd be, and then the world would be perfect, but it was as long as I could stay there. And that was incredibly frightening and incredibly um, pressure filled. It was, it was awful. So we've got to stop thinking that the answer to emotional eating is to lose weight. No, the answer to emotional eating is to start looking at our emotions, dealing with them, feeling them, understanding where they come from, and deciding whether or not the, the emotions that the emotions and the thoughts that are negative, do we want to keep them or do we want to get them, let them go? But ultimately, it's about you understanding your brain and taking power and taking control over how your life moves forward and not just going willy-nilly or letting other people control what you do. That won't work. Okay? So next week, we'll see how we put all of this stuff together. Okay? Hope everyone, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was in educational. I hope you learned a lot about the brain. And again, making sure our four things for our, our, what can be done now, again, remember that for, that thoughts are always optional. What you think about, you attract. So really pay attention to the thoughts that you're having. Make decisions ahead of time and stick with them. And lastly, support yourself with positive self-talk through affirmations. All right. Hope this was helpful. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the group. If you are not a member of the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Community, www dot facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough. I'm also just made this decision. Uh, I am going to in the comments in the group uh, and I'm doing this, although the people who are listening on the podcast, yeah, actually you will have time. I have a challenge that I'm going to be doing an upcoming challenge. It is going to be the week of September 19th. And it is a, it's going to be a five-day challenge. If you are interested in being on the wait list for that challenge, it is a free challenge. It's going to be run in a separate Facebook group. It will not be in my Breakthrough Emotional Eating group. It will be in a separate challenge only Facebook group. And we will make sure it, it's going to be a five-day, pretty, pretty intensive, you know, getting people set up for success and really getting people moving in the right direction with their emotional eating and with their weight loss. So 
We're really excited about that. So if that's something that you want more information about, you can get on the wait list. Again, it's free. Um, and what I will do is I will drop the wait list um, link in the comments and you can go and you can put your name on the wait list and then you'll be the first one to know when the information about the challenge comes out. Again, the challenge is September 19th. So down the road, but it's coming. So I want people to know about it. And if you're in, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you need to get, you want to get into the group or you can just sign yourself up on the, uh, and I will actually put this in the show notes as well. Um, so there'll be show notes about the, um, about the link for the uh, wait list. Okay. All right, everyone have a great rest of your Thursday and I will see you next week for episode three of our three-part series. All right. Take care.